Hello, everyone. Welcome to CoBuzz Live on Thursday. Today, we have got a really fun show. Like all, really, most all of these shows are so much fun. Uh, at least they are for me. I hope they're. I hope they're a lot of fun for you too, and and provide some information that you would have uh, not uh, otherwise. Uh, not otherwise gotten. So yeah, we've got a couple of the guys from Kev here today, and we're gonna. I'll introduce uh, uh, Johan and Ben in just a little while. Uh, before we get started, I'll tell you a little bit about CoBuzz. We uh, we're a uh, high res streaming service. We've got over sixty million tracks and add literally thousands and thousands every single um, every single week. And we've got our files up to twenty four one ninety two. There's not any really. Uh, heavy lifting involved in anything that has to unfold our files. So they're recorded uh, just like they do in the studio uh, for some of these recordings, so these uh, high resolution recordings. But the sound quality is unbelievable. And I, I get asked a lot, um, you know, can you really hear the difference between standard resolution, which is really good, 1644 or, and up to 24 or 192. And what I typically tell people, and, and I'd like Johan and, and Ben to, to weigh in on this as we, as we get started, but what you'll find is that there's not just, high resolution is just a bunch, like millions and millions of tiny details that any one of them uh, by themselves you probably wouldn't hear any difference, but you add all of these things together and you really do hear a really good difference with uh, high resolution provided it's uh, mixed and mastered properly, uh, which these days, if you've been listening to uh, recordings over the last four or five years, uh, I, I'm just going, they're the best recordings I've ever heard in my life. There are no recordings that have ever been made in history with the bandwidth and the extension on the bottom end and the top end that you can get from digital high res these days. It's really come a long way since the uh, early 80s, mid 80s, late 80s, when everything was just recorded, when it was recorded digital. So many of the times it just sounded uh, sterile. It's just not that way anymore. Uh, it's amazing what 20, 30, 40 years will do uh, of experience. Uh, we've got a several plans and I'm really, really happy to announce that last November, we dropped our price to $14.99. So now you can get these 60 million cuts for only $15 uh, per month. If you pay annually, um, you can get these at about twelve fifty per month. Um, so having 60 million cuts of at least 1644 and then up to 24192 uh, to an old music lover like myself, that is a uh, cause for me to have to pinch myself every single time I, I even uh, open up CoBuzz. We've also got a family plan. Um, so if you've got family that you know, you're listening to CoBuzz and they're just listening to Spotify or, or you know, some of the lesser services. Um, get them all in on this thing for about $25 a month. You can get your whole family in. It's up to six members and get everybody to listen to high resolution audio. Um, and then, of course, we've got our Sublime plan. This is a, a plan that one of our guests today takes huge advantage of uh, for uh, $250 uh, a year, uh, which roughly $21 per month, you uh, you can hop in on our Sublime plan. And what that's going to do is, is allow you to buy high resolution or really just anything digital off of CoBuzz for about half of what it would cost uh, ordinarily. And ordinarily, our prices are crazy anyway. Um, I pulled this one up. Uh, we're going to, we'll change the Neetha. Let's change this one out next week. But uh, this is a really cool one Crime of the Century. Uh, you can buy that for $21. Just anybody off the street can go to cobuzz.com and hop into our download store. And that's a $21 purchase. Uh, for a 24192 recording, which is incredible. But if you're a Sublime member, that same recording will run you $10.49. So if you are the kind of person that likes to download for whatever reason, some people like to download because they just want to own it. Others like to download to support their to support their artists. When you download anything from Cobuzz, the artist gets a normal cut, just like they would in a record store. Um, so it really is a great way to help support your artists and um, the guy that's going to be on here, Johan from, from, uh, from Kef, it, he is a huge download guy 
And um, so we can we can talk just a, a, a little bit about that. They've also got a new playlist up on our on our manufacturers playlist that they're called High Five Partners under playlists. Uh, take a look at these things. Um, they're some of the best playlists that that you can imagine. And it's become the playlist section has become about the second uh, busiest uh, place on Cobus. So. Uh, we're really proud of uh, what what Kev has brought to the table on here. And with no further ado, I would like to introduce my friend, Johan Kord. Hey, Johan, how are you doing, buddy? I'm good. I'm good. It's a, a cold, becoming winter evening here, but it's um, nice and toasty here in my uh, office come man cave studio. You're in the you're in the you. What part of the UK are you in? Brighton on the south coast, right opposite France. That is cool. That is a beautiful area. I've I've, I've actually been, uh, but but the only time I've ever been to the UK when it was warm was like the middle of June. It's like past that, I've never had a warm day in the UK. It's like it's usually at least for me, you know. It's like I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. And it's it's such a totally opposite kind of a thing, but. It's one of the most magical places in the world and one of my favorite places to go. And I can't believe the number of hi-fi outfits that, you know, that popped up from that area. Some of the best hi-fi outfits in the world, including Kev. So welcome. And uh, I'm so glad that you could join us, especially I'm so glad that you could join us after our meeting in, um, in uh, Bristol last year. Right before the COVID thing hit, right? Oh my goodness, just about the last, uh, the, just about the last uh, big show that uh, that 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 took that, that took place. Yeah, it, yeah. I think it was my last major show where loads of manufacturers are, and um, boom, and then COVID hit. Yeah, yeah. I actually came back from um, the Bristol show. I think I hung out like two days at home and I had just been to Paris, I believe. Um, so I'd gone to Paris and then to Bristol for the show. You and I had met up there and I, I got to tell you, I had the best time with you with that big blade system that you were uh, that, that you were showing off. Oh, we didn't um, do blades at Bristol. I think you're where was that? That must have been Chicago. That was in Chicago. Okay. The year before, yeah, that was at uh, the uh, Expona show. Expona show. I remember that was the one that I had a terrific in time. With that. Where what we were you play. using in Bristol? I'm trying to remember. Well, Bristol um, the last year we took a bit of a risk. Um, we were mainly presenting. I mean, there was Kef all over the show. But, oh, you were in the uh, Hegel room. Yes, I was in the Hegel room where it was interesting. We just had one pair of kefs, and we were showing. They were they were the LS fifties, right? And the LS fifty monitors, and we were just showing the step up. Strangely enough, um, from an amplifier point of view. Um, starting off with the entry level Hegel and moving right up to like the ten thousand dollar amplifier, which is kind of nuts over the top, if you like, when you're taking a fifteen hundred dollar pair of speakers and uh, partnering it with a ten thousand dollar amp, kind of unusual, but it worked for both, uh, for both Hegel and Kef. We were very pleased with it and. As a speaker manufacturer, um, we, uh, we we kind of felt it was testament to the quality of these uh, these little kefs, which are, I think, quite well known. Um, to say that, look, everything's important in the chain, because um, you know what you guys at Cobos are uh, busy promoting is 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 source is is you know decent quality recordings in higher resolution um and as a speaker many fundamentally a speaker manufacturer we are at the end of the chain right at the other end of the chain of course in between there's a whole bunch of stuff amplifiers dax electronics and all that which all affect the sound 
but the end point, the speaker, uh, the drivers, the, the, when they move, um, you know, they have to be able to resolve and you have to be able to, your receptors have to be able to hear. Um, so it was a very, very interesting exercise. I were, it really was. And I remember being in the room with uh, uh, a few novices that were going and they were thinking, no way I'm hearing the difference. But every every single person there, there did. And you just did, a, as usual, a masterful uh, job at, at, at presenting the line. Let's bring in uh, let's bring in one of your um, one of your cohorts in crime, Ben Hoggins. <laughs> hey, Ben, how are you? I'm not too bad, David. How are you? Well, you sound like you are in the UK, but in fact, where where exactly are you, Ben? Yeah, so I'm I'm streaming live from Kef Corporate HQ in Hong Kong. Um, so five o'clock in the morning, all fun and games. <laughs> um, <laughs> they never stop in Hong Kong. No, we don't stop in Hong Kong. Um, yeah, it's very very busy, both for work and play. So, uh, so Ben and Ben and I and and Johan were talking yesterday i guess it was and uh i'm i'm just going on i mean it's you know four o'clock in the afternoon or so here and 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 ben tells me what time it is and i'm going where the heck are you and he's going oh well i'm in the hong kong office like, oh my god thank you so everyone you know we owe ben a huge thank you for starting his day so early or maybe ending it so late i'm not quite sure yesterday i think was ending it very late and um uh really really pleased to be part of this really really pleased so happy to do this happy to talk about kef uh, happy to to talk to everybody that's watching so uh well at least in the states you guys i could just shut up and you guys could just talk forever because we could we could listen to you guys uh speak british for you know the whole show because because it just sounds so cool <laughs> <laughs> guys uh, before we really get into the product you're both you know such interesting people um Johan, you have been you've been in this industry for a couple of years now and have done a couple of things um, forever. Tell, yeah. Tell us what what brought you to Kef and kind of lead us up to to, to now, if you would. Well, uh, I'll try and be as brief as possible, but uh, I've uh, basically been at Kef since uh, when did I start at Kef? 1989. Whoa, a really long time ago. So you've but, seen a lot of changes. You've seen the big changes at Kef. I, I've seen the the, the 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 huge changes at Kef and been really pleased to be part of them. Uh, it's been a fantastic journey. But, I mean, even before uh, 89, you can see, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's my grayness. Um I was. I've been. I've been in the industry since uh, on the retail side since ooh, 19, 1972. Something, no, no, seventy five. Sorry, seventy five. Um, I was in retail, and then um, prior to Kef, I worked for various manufacturers. Um, as a rep, other manufacturers, some quite well-known ones in different fields. And I've done various, various roles for Kef globally. So uh, it's, 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 it's kept me, it's kept a roof over my head and it's been really enjoyable. In fact, uh, the only other thing I've got to say, and uh, I know a lot of people in the industry are, uh, are passionate music lovers um but uh music really grabbed me from the age of about six um and uh basically i bought my first lp um when i was 11. um okay what was it gotta know um it was two bargain basement from uh, 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 my local supermarket where i had a Saturday job took the risk of trying to sell some LPs, which was unknown then. And uh, they got a job lot of bargain, bargain stuff. And I bought Relics by Pink Floyd and wow. and uh, Goodbye Cream. 
Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty mature yeah. for an eleven-year-old. Uh, well, well, no, no, that, that was uh, sorry, sorry. They were my first. Beg your pardon, but they were my first purchases, which were when I was working in the supermarket as a Saturday job, underage, because I was only about fifteen. So right now, the, the the coolest thing for me that 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 uh, Johan gets to do is he gets to be basically an ambassador and travel all around and show people how cool Kev can sound. Uh, along with Hegel, he's he's got a, a couple of things that he's doing this with, but he's the main guy for for Kev when um, when when they go okay, well we've got to we've got to have somebody that that really knows this stuff that we we've, we've got this super important show or. Or whatnot they've got to be shown perfectly johan is the one that 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 i've always seen uh, uh presenting kef and he just does a such a great job but it's not like he just goes up there and plays speakers and it's never stuff like keith don't go he's a huge music guy which to me that those are the people that i like to go see more than anyone at the shows even if the gear is something that i'm super interested in it's always the music that set, sets apart um sets apart people at, at shows like that you can find you can always find the gearheads and you can always find the music lovers well it's and, it's it's mighty important uh i've i've always been personally passionate about this because um sure you know what attracts people okay obviously gearheads who spend loads of money but uh you've got to inspire people and when when you get a crowd of people in the room oh my goodness um how can you predict what they are going to like i've got my own tastes i've been fortunate enough over the years to uh my travels have exposed me to um, a lot of different cultures and a lot of different music scenes, if you like. Uh, one of the, uh, the, 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 there are some real, real, real surprises um, and, and binding factors and similarities. Uh, just one little example. Uh, I'm a massive um, acolyte of the, uh, and it's quite a special scene of of the uh, France, the the French scene. It's it's uh, there's some extraordinary French stuff and uh, has been for years. Um, uh, all sorts of styles. And if you go to like say, f there's reggae in France, and there's a lot of reggae, like f for example in in the UK, but it's totally different. The Franco reggae is much more kind of African based, um, whereas the the UK is much more Rasta Jamaican based, for example. How about anyway, that? For ages. You'll, you'll have to. Uh, um, I, I'm not sure if I shared this or not, but I, I sure I certainly will uh, uh, right after the show. Maybe Neethi, you can put up the. Uh, Kef playlist that that Johan did for us, and it's super and super ben, interesting. Ben, because oh, both of you guys worked on this. That's fantastic. Oh, I didn't realize goodness. it was both. Thanks good, good. Because, good. Well, um, when your colleagues, I mean, obviously, I've got my own tastes, and uh, uh, Ben has got his own special tastes, and we keep on, you know, we keep on bantering off each other. Um, and sometimes arguing because, for example, you know, uh, Ben is a massive metal metal guy, and it doesn't float my boat at all. Metal, um, and uh, I'm a soul guy. Um, so we blame we be blame Ben for the metal, and we praise you for the soul on the on the. Uh... Well, no, no, it's different strokes, and that's exactly what we're talking about when yeah. when you go to a show. People who know. Nothing have got to be. Ooh, what's that? Totally and, uh, th that's the kick I get out of it, and that's what, to be frank, I've missed doing live. So the opportunity um, for Ben and I to put a playlist together, which is somewhat eclectic and also international, um, and has some Kef connection. Very cool. So you guys pull that up. Uh, Nitha will uh, will uh, put the link uh, uh, to the uh, 
to the playlist up in the uh, in the uh, chat area. So, Ben, you've got a really cool job too. You're not only um, an international trainer, but you're you're a senior pro product manager as well, right? Uh, I, I do. I'm, I'm part of the product management team. So yeah, I do get involved um, with the product development, with the product marketing, you know, a lot, lot of different hats. Um, but the, the main role, as you say, is the is the training aspect. But to, you know, to to fully kind of because I, I similar to Johan, you know, when we're outside of COVID, you now I'm covering, say, Dubai over to Australia, lots of you know, boots on the ground. And you get a very, very unique insight when you're doing that, when you're interfacing with the public, with the end listeners, you know, it, it's a very, very different um, viewpoint and a very, very important one. Um, so that helps people like myself and Johan to kind of come back to headquarters and kind of give that real kind of first hand view of what's going on. And that really helps to guide what we end up producing for the uh, for the public, because um, it's it's all well and good making something that we like, um, but at the end of the day, we want to make things that people are going to use in their everyday lives. So, uh, yeah, a lot of travel, a lot of talking, but it's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. I, I love that philosophy though, because uh, so many companies are so heavily engineered. Uh, engineer driven that they miss the point of what real people really want. So uh, you guys have done an absolute excellent job of, of I think, listening to what people want. Um, and we're going to be talking a whole lot about the new uh, wireless LS50 uh, today. And as someone who actually uses product like this, you guys have nailed this. I cannot wait to actually get a set and, and and take them take them for a spin but like it's like all the checkpoints are made um so you know kudos to you guys and kudos for you listening to your customers because uh so many customers so many places just don't uh but i don't think you could come up with a product or products like you guys have come up without it you you've done a very very good job uh doing doing this it takes uh, with uh, particularly once you get into the realms of uh, actives, um, it's a whole different ball game. I mean, obviously, Kef is a well-known speaker brand and uh, a leading speaker brand. Basically, you were saying why are there so many brands? Uh, you know, cool hi-fi brands out of the the out of Great Britain, out of the UK. Um, a lot of it has to do with uh, historically with the BBC, and in fact, uh, you know, Kef's, Kef's founder was an engineering director for the BBC, so he was a scientist. Um, but he, Raymond Cook, he 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 was one other thing. He was a passionate passionate music lover, so a scientist and a music lover. And he approached um, his great idea was how to use innovative um, uh, new materials, how to make loudspeakers better. Um, and um, always try to be at the cutting edge. Um, and 1961 is a long time ago, but uh, the, that philosophy still, still stands true today. Yeah, well, we're gonna uh, in just a uh, just a few minutes. We're gonna dive uh, uh, kind of deep into what you guys are doing right now, and what the um, and what you guys have got going on with the with the new release or relatively new release of the um, LS50 wireless. Um, but before we do this, we are going to take us a little break uh, for maybe ten minutes, and we're gonna we're gonna bring on our uh, managing director Dan Matka uh to the uh to the stream and he's gonna tell us a little bit about some stuff that's going on with uh with cobus how you doing dan i'm good i'm good how, how are you guys hey man we're just hey, uh madam um you guys are just hanging out here yeah we're just we're just kind of hanging out we've got a we'll have a you know so a bunch of people joining us to hang out with the 
with the crowd, it, but uh, it looks like Ben's beard has transferred to Dan. Ben had a beard this morning, and it's kind of <laughs> flown across the water to you, Dan. Wow, wow, that's strange. strange. Yeah, no, Dan. Dan had total. He was completely blank this morning, so that I, I get it. Hey, man, I'm digging the uh, the little Christmas lights in your ears. That's well, I didn't know that they that they blink. Actually, I didn't <laughs> look in the awesome. mirror. You know, these are the GT two twenty. Oh, I've got those too. I'm walking around all over in the in the 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 uh, the grocery store then, because every time I go out now, I'm wearing the GT two twenty. So every time I go out, what you're telling me is I've got a Christmas light spectacle going on. Okay, we got to talk about that. Look, yeah, thanks. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Grado. Thank you, Grado. <laughs> well, Dan, we're gonna uh, we're gonna leave for a few minutes and let you uh, do your thing, and uh, we'll see you folks in in just a few minutes. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Bye, Dan. Um, let's see. I th I got to get uh, get this going um, because I have my slides at the ready, but not quite at the ready. Not quite at the ready um all right so let's see uh i'm really really un unprepared for this oh there they are of course i didn't need to to uh, put them up myself uh our production team is is uh, as always more than ahead of the game thank you guys thank, thank you, you guys Nita. Um, the, uh, uh, first thing that I wanted to mention is you may, uh, realize that it is the holiday season and that, uh, there's a lot of, um, talk about Christmas, Hanukkah and other holidays. So we decided to put together our own little guide at Cobuzz. Everybody on the team in the U S, uh, contributed a couple of ideas. So there's some new release, uh, music that came out this year, some great reissues, some hardware that we recommend, uh, some great charities you can donate to. Uh, a, a really interesting blend gives you a little bit of the taste of the personalities and the interests of the people who work for Cobas. So get on there and check it out. It's not all stuff that's available on Cobas. It's other goods and services that we think are cool as well. Kind of sharing the love that we think if you're into Cobas, you may be into this stuff as well. So the next thing that I was going to mention is a couple of new playlists. Again, I mentioned the holiday season. It is actually the first night of Hanukkah, if I'm not mistaken, because my mother is texting me about doing a Hanukkah candle lighting over uh, FaceTime or Zoom uh, in about one hour. So I'm in New York. So Hanukkah, we've got a great Hanukkah playlist, Hanukkah music, music from cool Jewish artists. It's up and available on Cobas now, as well as a great playlist that compiles all of the editorial picks for the best jazz releases of this year. Great, great year for jazz. There's no question about it. That playlist will keep you entertained for many hours. So do check those out. The playlists are always available right on the main page of the Cobas apps. Discover is how you get to it in the Cobas apps and any partner hardware, including the kept speakers, these playlists will be right right in your control app, along with all of the other Cobuzz music, so check them out. We also have a great download store, as you know. We push the sale of downloads. The downloads benefit everybody, not only you, the consumer, who can then own the music and own the files and take them wherever you like. Even if you don't have any internet connection, even if you no longer have a subscription, you own the files. And of course we sell files, not only in CD lossless quality, but also 24 bit high res, huge. Very few places where you can buy, buy music in this quality. We've got great prices and we've always got stuff on sale. We managed to snag uh, the Paul McCartney high res solo catalog for a download sale if you know anything about the beatles they never put the beatles on sale paul mccartney maybe he's been on sale a few times we got a sale uh it starts tomorrow so definitely check that out 
and a seasonal sale with music from all labels and across all different genres has already started. Huge, huge opportunity to build a library of high-res downloads. So check that out as well. Um, in terms of some cool new music, there's tons of cool new music coming out every day, every week, every Friday is new release day. I've been doing this a lot on this uh, this presentation with the the air quotes. New release Friday. Tomorrow it is. And I'm really excited that this new remaster of After the Gold Rush, one of my favorite Neil Young albums, is coming out 20, uh, 50th anniversary tomorrow. One of my all-time favorite artists. Great, great album. Tons of really cool bonus material. We love Neil Young at Cobas, and that's going to be a special one. And I also really love the Kinks. This is not high res, but it is a cool new reissue with tons and tons of bonus content, including uh, Ray and Dave, the two brothers who led the Kinks, talk about the music around their kitchen table at the time that it was recorded. Old, old family recordings. So this is going to be a really cool release that I hope people will also enjoy. If you like the Kinks, you will never run out of Kinks music to listen to on Cobas, that's for sure. So that's really, there's also new music and new artists, although this time of year, uh, we're getting to the point where it's just a few superstar releases and then that's it. Then it's all Christmas music all the time. I think that people know where to find that too. So that's all I got. That's all I got. Dan, uh, man, thanks for, for taking your time to, to do this. Dan is, is our managing director, and he is, uh, I think he and Neith are the two busiest people at Cobuzz. Uh, gosh, I don't know. Sue Jan stays every, pretty every, busy, too. Everybody is busy. We're a small team, but it's definitely a lot of dedication, right? Everybody is working all the time. And... I think, you know, maybe we'll take Christmas Day off, possibly New Year's Day, but only if everybody is well behaved. Yeah. Hey, man, it's uh, happy Hanukkah, Dan. To you, too. To you, too. I'm glad we got this done so I can let my mom know I'll be available for the candle lighting. Uh, hey, man, uh, have a good time. I'm bringing back uh, Ben and Johan and, uh, and we're going to say uh, goodbye to you. You go, uh, go, go light some candles. Go Sh Shalom. Sh go, shalom to all. Go get pyro. Go get pyro Hanukkah on us. Happy Ooh. Hanukkah, everybody. Thank you. And, Thank you. Uh, you know, enjoy the music. I know you will. Bye. So uh, that's a huge, Johan and myself have talked about this quite a few times, but he's always calling me going, Dave, I just bought the new, you know, blah, blah, blah. Dave, I just put, I just bought 75 albums from, from, from Cobus. And I'm going, you're, you're amazing. I thought I bought a lot of music off, off of Cobus, but you, I think you might be our number one manufacturer that buys actually stuff for yourself. Well, absolutely. I'm, I've, I've, uh, as you can see uh, from my, vinyl thank god i never sold it uh behind me here <coughs> you think it's like been, six thousand albums or something yeah five and a half six thousand albums um i've also been uh, um uh, an absolute crazy hoarder of um of digital music which uh dan and and you touched on it i like to own my music not rent it um and it has to do as you also mentioned with the you know the practicalities of it that is a four terabyte thunderbolt drive you remember when the ipod came out it's like oh you can get a exactly. thousand songs on this and they were like you know at 192 or something yeah i mean i had and in the you see you probably see behind me the white drawers behind me i've, I've still got to get around to it and there's loads in the the attic um i used to have so many cds i still have um uh but i found no 
no joy in opening a CD sleeve and putting it on. And some of the earlier CDs were, you know, what they were. Um, and I made a huge mistake. It took me about four years to rip my whole CD collection and uh, drank a lot of, lot of bottles of wine late into the, late into the night. Um, I should have gotten a student to do it. Uh, <laughs> But, you know, uh, having, having done that, and then, of course, streaming services, uh, or th th then I start buying the music. But I, uh, uh, and, and that's how I first came across Cobuds. Um, it, was, it, it was great. Oh, my God, I can download the file. And I found that the amount of music I buy, I more than save the uh, subscription price. Right. Yeah, that's that's one thing about uh, uh, Sublime. I mean, it, it it that is a a crazy crazy deal. Uh, well, are you... I'm, I'm I'm also a bit you know I'm a bit sick. This is a 500 gigabyte iPhone. And I do the same all, thing. Um, I download it, uh, I, and you get the choice. So I download my music in uh, ALAC because, of course. If you if you download it in FLAC, you can't actually store it, or you have to have a FLAC player, and it becomes a bit clunky. Um, but uh, yeah, it's for all those long flights without internet. Yeah, I've 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 got actually I just redid mine, and I there's got to be five or six hundred albums that I usually carry on there, but uh, yeah. right now I've got like. 20 or something but I'm, I'm the same way i buy a huge uh hard drive just so i i never have any problem download i never get that dreaded message that oh sorry your storage is full i don't play storage well, this is this is this is actually an absolute mirror of my server which sits in the cupboard um which is a room nucleus um and it's an absolute mirror and of course so I've got the stuff on the on the rune nucleus, or I can access Cobas, uh, or you know, it's all sorts of possibilities. Oh uh, yeah, oh yeah. Well, you know, we we are we are we we probably need to go ahead and and get into a, a little more of the reason that we're here. Um, and I wanted to start this off with just. Um, a little bit of flagship stuff. Johan shared a uh, Johan shared a, a system with us today mm -hmm. that just absolutely looked amazing. But the 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 main subject, the main subject matter that we're going to be talking about today is going to be the new uh, LS50 wireless two speakers. Uh, but they had to kind of come from someplace, right? It was like they didn't just appear. Uh, they had to have a dad. Uh, that 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 has you know that gets in, incredible uh, incredible reviews. Nita, go ahead and pull up the um, the system that that Johan was talking about. Which yeah. oh um, my gosh! That yeah. if you haven't seen them, folks, this is the blade from Kef. Yeah, this is this is extraordinary. I mean, uh, you will see there are actually five of them. So. This is a photo from probably one of the most extraordinary mastering studios, which I personally have ever experienced. Uh, I'm half Dutch, hence the name Johan. Um, and this studio is in Utrecht in the Netherlands. And these guys are absolutely passionate about quality mastering. Um, and they, um, they actually do all their main mastering in the studio. You see this console in the digital console there um, on using five Kef blades. Why five? Because they offer, um, and, and, and they've got a very cool little label. It is quite niche. It's kind of um, basically out there modern classical. But um, um, it, it really extraordinary. And they offer in all sorts of formats, um, from CD to 96.24, 192.24. They offer DSD. Uh, they offer 32-bit float. 
This is Maya Friedman, who is, uh, in fact, um, the wife of um, the, the mastering engineer um, there. And um, she is Dutch classical muses, musician, great cello player. And that track, uh, one of those tracks, is featured on the Kef Kobler's playlist. Uh, I thought it'd be really interesting. It's, it's really out there. And you can see... Um, if you can see the screen there, all the formats that they uh, offer, and they also um, are really serious, and they, 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 they're really into Kobas. Um, and, of course, it's available to stream on Kobas, their, their, their catalog. It's out there. It's out there stuff, but it's really interesting. Very cool, very cool. You can pull that down. That's uh, that that that's a, a beautiful shot and a really cool story, and the speakers that we're just about to talk uh, uh, about actually come, they they come straight from this. Related, you know, the, like you said, uh, everything's got to have a daddy. I mean, you know, uh, with Kef, we we've been around since '61. We have the granddaddy. Um, the I think the, the, the let's say the modern era uh, of Kef products, which I would say, let's let's call it this this millennium. Uh, um, um, everything is kind of trickled down from uh, from a technical point of view. Um, obviously, it's a flagship from Blade, um, and. Um, our products are all about UniQ point source, which Blade has as well and takes even further. I don't want to go bore you, but it's a massive flagship. But just about all KEF products are UniQ point source. And the, 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 the story of UniQ started, in fact, the year, uh, just about the year that I started with KEF, and it is honestly part of the reason why I joined KEF. I was fortunate enough to be um, to be uh, invited for interview, and I couldn't believe my luck because a couple of days before, I'd read an article about this new technology um, in one of the Hi-Fi mags and thought, oh, my goodness, that looks like a damn good idea. And at the time, I was working, I was uh, a representative for another loudspeaker manufacturer. And I, I, I actually uh, went from there to Kef. I think. Very cool. Yeah. Anyway, it's UniQ. Ben. Yeah. We're, we'll yeah. talk about the, uh, I want to talk a little more about the, uh, the tweeter, the unusual tweeter, the way that you guys are using this and just a, in just a little bit. In fact, we'll break down the whole uh, we'll break down the whole driver. But maybe you could just say a couple of words about you know why you guys would put a tweeter in the middle of a of a speaker when there's plenty of room on the top and the bottom of that thing. You could have easily put that tweeter there. Well, it kind of boils down to why should only one person in the room get the best sound? Um, now, UniQ has this amazing spread of of equal directivity. So, you know, normally you, you have to point the speakers at a single place in the room. Um, as you start to move off axis, you're, you're no longer sharing the same experience as the person sitting next to you. Uh, and you get room interactions, which are always going to happen with speakers. But with having this amazing spread of sound, everybody is getting that same experience. The room becomes less of an issue. I'm not going to say it's a non-issue, but it's far less of an issue. Um, and that spreads into home theater, into surround sound, into the architectural ranges. Uh, so it, it's speaker for people with lots of friends. It's probably the, uh, the way to put it. Um, the, uh, the blade has won a ton of, uh, of awards as well before, before you ever even got going with this. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's not only unique looking, but it's a it's a very interesting, unique configuration, um, which uh, 
it was uh, fortunately the group allowed our engineers, our our acoustic department, right from the very beginning, is uh, based in southeast England in our birthplace, Maidstone in Kent, and that is where everything, you know, clean sheet of paper is conceptualized and still is. Um, and we've got a bunch of absolutely incredible uh, engineers, acoustic engineers, and they're also very disparate. I mean, we got English, we got Mexican, we got uh, French, Italian, um, and in fact, our head of acoustics, Dr. Jack Ockley Brown, um, I remember when he was uh, doing a summer internship, and he was so good that he got taken on. And really? Now he's, the boss. <laughs> now he's the boss. How about that? That's incredible. Yeah, and, and, and I hate it, him because he's really young. <laughs> what were you going to say, Ben? No, so the 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 the, the thing with our R and D department as well is it's not just acousticians. You know, we've got research physicists on the team. We've got DSP expert. Yeah, and it's it's a relatively small team, so they pretty much have a constant hand on being involved in every product. You know, so you know, we we do Absolutely. you know these amazing technologies into the top end, into the high end, and because they the ones that have actually invented those technologies, they're a, they're in a much better position to refine them and adapt them, so that we can bring a lot of that into you know further down. The line um because at the end of the day everybody deserves to have great sound so we want to bring it all down get that consistency in voicing yeah, and just kind of make the kef experience as great as possible for anybody whether you're buying q series or you're buying blade and muon um no, it's, it's an amazing team um and they do such great work Absolutely. well i can attest how uh, how important it is to have an amazing team the reason uh, that we're here today is really to talk about these guys, uh, which what a killer history this little this little speaker has had, right? I mean, it kind of started uh, with the LS50, and I have never seen a bookshelf speaker, a stand mount speaker that was this successful. I mean, you guys must have sold hundreds and thousands of pairs of these things i don't know i i, I actually uh, i'm not sure the exact figure but yeah it doesn't it, matter a whole boatload um the, the 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 story of the heritage of this uh speaker um um ls50 um at the time it was uh meant to be uh loudspeaker ls50 for our 50th anniversary a 50th anniversary limited edition product and we were going to limit it to uh i think it was about 1500 pairs um and in in homage to another a kind of modern take on the famous um, BBC design, the LS35A, uh, which was um, actually never intended as a hi-fi loudspeaker. It was meant to be a, uh, a near-field speech monitor for outside broadcast for the BBC. But it was adopted by audiophiles because they loved uh, audiophiles of the time, loved the properties. But the BBC insisted that KEF had the methodology and uh, to um, they insisted that all LS35As, KEF was not interested in making at first the LS35A uh, loudspeaker because they were doing loads of other things. But mm -hmm. the BBC insisted they all had KEF drivers and crossovers because of our quality control. Um, and that that's went, really interesting. Went on to become a legend. And for our 50th anniversary, we did have a lot of uh, partners around the world saying, oh, please, 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 can you, uh, can you make an anniversary edition of the LS35A? And our engineers said, absolutely not. 
technologies come on, right? Um, the, 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 we want to, you know, good as the LS35A design is or was, um, it had some fundamental flaws, which we believe we can we can we can create a product which overcomes these uh, uh, the, 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 these flaws and discrepancies, and applies our most modern technology, not least Unicube. Um, you know, they play louder, they go deeper. They, 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 there's, there's a, uh, so that was born. We brought them out, and I'll never forget. Um, uh, launching the the LS50. Uh, when, what year was it, Ben? Uh, that before, would have before, been two, 2011, 2012. Yeah, I think around 2011. Anyway, the, the Munich High End Show, and, you know, where, you know, we get a load of, load of our trade partners. Hey, what do you think of this? And they all went. They all went and were just like, oh, what are we going to do now? Well, we better make it unlimited. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, 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 have, I have to say, I was a, I was a Kef retailer back in the UK when LS50 launched, and yeah, I do have to say, I made a lot of sales commission um, <laughs> with LS50. Um, what no, what was just, your, what was your retailer, Ben? So I, I was working for a, a now unfortunately um, disappeared retailer called Superfy. Um, so yeah, we, we did, we did Kef, and when LS50 came out, it was. I mean, up, the, the R series came out at the same time as well, or thereabouts. And yeah, yeah the, the, the LS50 just absolutely flew. Um, and it did everywhere. Over here, too. I mean, this wasn't just a UK thing, right? I mean, at some point, you've got the hometown advantage. You have no hometown advantage in the States. And it's like you could not walk into a decent retailer and not see this speaker proudly on display. Um, I gave it my biggest um, uh, uh, go through with a company down here in Atlanta called Hi-Fi Buys. Um, huge, uh, very high-end dealer. And uh, Alan Jones and myself sat down for an afternoon. And we were just like having such a great time with this thing. And then, I don't know, a couple hours later, we added in a subwoofer and then the whole thing started all over again. But yeah, just an absolutely amazing product. And it really led to um, something that I think is like one of the more relevant products these days. And it's and it's the the uh, the new guy you've got, the LS50 Wireless 2 that had to come from something again. And and you guys uh, had it come from the uh, the beautiful LS50, and the, the 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 cool thing I like about the the um, the LS50 wireless is you guys basically made it so that anyone uh, that listens to anything uh, can hook these speakers up and not really need anything other than the speakers, which is. To me, super cool. You guys, uh, you guys made it so that it would play. You, you want to just tell us what the the process that you guys went through to to put well, all of this stuff in there? J j just basically, it just doesn't it doesn't come um, doesn't come instantly. I mean, there was a decision at Kef to um, certainly from an engineering point of view um, to say powered or even better active loudspeakers um, would be a really interesting way to go. I mean, we, we know how to make boxes, we know how to make drivers and all that, but we had to take on a, a, a whole bunch of new disciplines, like Ben mentioned, you know, DSP. Um, and we're also at KEF, we've always been passionate about being uh, I think what our American colleagues call a tier one manufacturer. Um, we don't, uh, we're not a garagista who sort of buys, buys stuff in. Everything is manufactured in house. And this includes the amplifiers, uh, which are inside the active LS50 wireless. We'll talk about those in just a sec. But just as far as use We make our own, we make our own amplifiers and the advantage is 
because we make the drivers and the amplifiers, it's bespoke, it's tuned and optimized. Um, and so we can wring the very best performance out. And, and there, there were, there, there, it's been a steep learning curve, some of the original products um, way back when. Um, um, uh, laudable and interesting, but um, the LS50 Wireless 2 is the, the real culmination of a very fast learning curve. So right out of the box, uh, guys, that you, you decided that that almost all music services would be uh, included in this thing. So pretty much no matter um, what music service that you choose, the LS52 Wireless uh, plays that, as well as if you're you know an AirPlay guy. A lot of people love just to you know hook up straight through either AirPlay or uh, or Bluetooth or, or, or even Google Chromecast, which will allow you to still just use the basic uh, functions of the Cobuzz app. But you guys went a few steps further than this and made sure that it played any resolution, which I think is like way, way cool. So if you're, I'm a big Cookie Marenko fan. I buy a lot of uh, Blue Coast stuff. And all of her stuff is in DSD. And I noticed that you guys um, play DSD and MQA as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and the, the key, I think the key thing with this is that our user experience and user, um, user interface guys were involved in the development from the very beginning. So we were able to kind of look at what we wanted to achieve and really kind of bake it in from the beginning with the hardware choices, the firmware platform, all of that. And you know, we're not really trying, it's almost like we're reinventing the wheel by not reinventing the wheel. Yeah, um, it's been three years work, by the way. It's not just, uh, oh, let's take the original LS50 wireless and uh, let's just add a few bells and whistles to the platform. This is a completely new platform, which has been three long years in the making, right, Ben? Yeah, and it's yeah. yeah platforms three, three are like and... platforms are like drugs. It's like try to get a platform uh, uh, out in uh, three years. That's a nearly an impossibility. That's a lot of work. And and that was from scratch. Um, you know that there is. There is no similarity between this and the previous LS50 wireless. Um, apart from the, the maybe, apart from the, <laughs> apart from the, the general <laughs> outward look, but the you know we, we didn't want to kind of dictate to people you know you've got to use this product in this way, like a lot of Hi-Fi does. Um, you know, so we wanted to kind of, you know we we recognise that as you mentioned, David, you know some people just like AirPlay. You know, you use DSD. Um, Sorry about that. You know, we, we wanted to to kind of allow people to listen and experience music in exactly the way that they already do, but just taking that up a fair few notches. I mean, for example, if in, in your case with DSD, you know, think about the amount of products that can actually um, take DSD natively, or it tends to be DOP. You know, you get a lot of DOP. But that depends on the source component being able to output by DOP. But you know, we decide, okay, let's take that out of the source component's hands. Let's just deal with DSD natively or accept DSD natively. Um, so that you know, if you do have if you do have a lot of DSD but you don't have the equipment to send it out, use LS50 Wireless 2 and you, you'll, you'll get it. So it's just making it as easy as possible to access what you want. Yeah, this is also uh, for for people to. This would serve as a great educational piece, so you could easily go. You could easily take the same song, start it off with Bluetooth, then you could step it up to AirPlay. That is an absolute up step from Bluetooth. Um, then you can go from from Bluetooth to uh, full or high resolution high resolution. Um, uh, file so you can go from Bluetooth to AirPlay to full and high resolution. Those are huge differences in all of those formats. So it's really neat 
that with one product that you could actually prove that to someone. And it, these are things that don't take two listens. You you go from Bluetooth to AirPlay or AirPlay to full res or high res. Um, and those are those are things that you just don't have to listen to twice or three times. You're going, is is there really a difference here? Because all of those are, are absolutely huge differences. So while I appreciate the fact that anyone can play anything in their own choosing. Um, I think with a product like this, it really lends itself to audiophilia and that you could easily prove these things to yourself without someone over your shoulder going, well, don't you think that sounds better? Or does that sound as good? Just do it on your own. And time. actually, and actually um, you know, you work in the opposite direction as well. Of course, you could, yeah. there, are, there are a whole, you know, a whole bunch of people who, who like uh, are into this. Um, I mean, at a typical sort of highly specialist high end show, I remember appearing with our active, uh, our, our original LS50 wireless and, and audio files with hugely expensive systems would walk in and go, huh, powered, active, hmm. and, and, and immediately walk out again without even listening. Um, okay. Yeah, that's. And, I'm glad you brought that up. And, and, we, we, and, and the attitude has really changed. I know it's certainly in the last year, the self same guys go. Oh, that might be something really good. They've got their hundred thousand dollar, Okie Koki two thousand system, and fine. That's fantastic. Good for them. But this is, and, and these guys were sort of saying. Oh my goodness! You know uh, that could be really good in my den or in blah blah blah, and um, by the same respects, uh, I think Ben touched on this. We wanted it to be simple. I'm going to exaggerate a bit. So simple that you know your grandma can set them up in ten minutes, right? That's about that's about the long and the short of it. Yeah, we're not going to mention that your that your grandma's a nuclear physicist, but hey, <laughs> no, no uh, <laughs> let's stop putting, uh, we don't have to qualify that. Let's just leave it like that because it really did sound very good, uh, Johan. It's it's. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But let's uh, let's get back into the uh, the uh, LS50 wireless too, because you guys have got another feature on here, which I think is just absolutely so cool, and that these LS50s don't have to be tethered together, which is a huge problem for a lot of people, right? Uh, ab absolutely. I mean, you have. I mean, we, we're living in smaller and smaller places. You know. People want to integrate their hi-fi into their living rooms. And you know, people don't like cables, um, to put a not too fine a point on it. Um, but we wanted to, to maximize what was possible. Um, you know, it was touched on earlier on where you start with a great source. And you, know, you, you can't really make a source as it goes through the signal chain better. You can only really at best maintain it. And you know, if you're starting at 24192 or 2496, uh, so we, we did put in the opportunity to continue that maintenance even through this inter-speaker connection. So for those people that don't want to have a cable um, either for aesthetics or they just can't route it around or whatever, um, we have gone through the significant um, R&D in order to get a wireless 2496 connection in between the speakers wirelessly. Um, but at the same time, for those people that want to use a cable um, and they want to use, they want to get the highest possible quality, uh, we have kept the option in to use an ethernet cable between the speakers for 24192. Is that so what that is? Is an Ethernet cable between the two? Yeah, yeah. It's just it's just a cap cap six. Oh, well, that's kind of cool. Five. So you really, if you uh, if you needed to, you could like if you've got like on my in my system, 
I've got two bookshelves. Uh, uh, you know, in the in the middle, there's a fireplace. It's it's a you can't you have to go underneath if you're going to do anything. So I could just really make a you know 25 30 foot uh, Ethernet cable and just run those between the two if I needed to. Yeah, yeah, but absolutely. if you don't, the worst pot, the worst you're going to get is still twenty four ninety six uh, resolution. Which I, I want you guys to explain how this is even possible because most places that try to do this, and I'm quite sure you guys had the same problem. You're not the timing is off, and so you get this huge smear, right? So how did you guys get? this to play 24 not even 24 96 even 1644 without a without the delay or without that latency that's that's quite incredible to me uh just in itself well uh, I'm, I'm sure technically it's extremely difficult um but it really has just been a case of measuring what that latency is during development and applying that in the inverse in the main speaker so everything goes to the primary speaker first. So all the sources go into there and then actually both channels left and right get sent over to the secondary speaker. So we know how long that's going to take and also going through the DSP, et cetera, inside the secondary speaker. So we can just apply that delay into the, the, the primary. So we get it matching. By the way, some of you might be, uh, we, we took the decision to call it uh, primary and secondary. The one, uh, uh, the primary is the one with all the physical inputs in, in, into it, uh, uh, rather than left and right, because sometimes you might want the one with the inputs to be on the left. Oh, you so you can, you can assign... Right. You can it's assign it. you can assign oh, that within cool. our Kef Connect app and swap it over. And stuff oh, like that is uh, that's really cool. Those are the kinds of things that you really do need to be out. Like you and Ben are, you're talking to people, you're seeing how these things are installed and seeing the difficulties that people are having. Without that kind of information, it is so easy to design a speaker that you don't think of those things. It's like, well, this is the way we design it. This is the way you need to use it, right? Yeah, and, and that, that's exactly, I mean, the original LS50 wireless did not originally have this feature to be able to swap them over. That was something that we added in. That's brilliant. A firmware update because, you know, going to the people, you know, you had people like with, say, turntables. So they'd have their primary speaker on the right side as it was mandated in the beginning with the original LS50 wireless, but their turntable might have been on the left side of the room. So instead of having to run a long pair of RCA cables over to the primary speaker. Or um, just not care. Yeah. <laughs> or like, do it. it. Hey, look at your well, you, you, you look up if you can. Yeah, but you do care about it if, uh, particularly if you're a classical music lover. It's one of the banes of my life listening to violins coming from the right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you definitely want your channels the, the, to be on the right side, and you guys have made provisions to do that. That's fantastic and, you know, really customer-centric, if you ask me. Yeah. Well, that's really cool. This really kind of brings I – mean, I think we're to the point right now that we can bring up the difference between powered speakers and actively powered speakers because they are totally, totally different. It's a, It's – they're not there. The only thing that's the same basically is you've got all your stuff into the speaker. You don't need to have outside of components, but can you guys talk a little bit about uh, powered versus? and then you could even give it powered versus active. Okay. Powered versus oh, active. Passive, I'm going to let passive. you guys have a discussion on this. Uh, passive powered active. Okay. So a passive speaker is, you know, a, a box with drivers uh, and a crossover inside, which is fed from an outboard amp, right? A powered speaker simply go, says, honey, I shrunk the amp. And usually we'll put the amp uh, in mini form into one of the loudspeakers and then 
the speakers uh, there will be a uh, there will be a speaker wire from one to the other from left to right um, and basically the amp the signal goes into the amp and then the amp uh, the the amp uh, afterwards comes a crossover which splits splits the frequencies between the drive units yeah. Yeah, I mean it's it's basically a powered system is basically a almost a passive system except you just don't have the choice of what your amplification is yeah 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 and it's really typically they're also connected with a um with a long speaker cable from one exactly, exactly. Amp to now, another which yeah. causes other issues now, so active is a totally different different ball game because okay you've got to supply a signal and the the crossover comes before the amplification stage so the signal feeds digital crossover which feeds to each uh, uh, each uh, the crossover feeds bespoke amplifiers by bespoke amplifiers you mean you need to have an amplifier for each of the drive units in a two-way design the tweeter and the base mid so if you like look at here on the uh on the uh, uh yeah. the, uh, ls50 that we're just talking about so the high frequency tweeter or the tweeter in the middle the the, the high mm -hmm. frequency unit has got a hundred watts each unit each speaker has got a hundred yeah. watts yeah. to it right yeah. and then each of the low frequency drivers on this particular one are, are using a 280 watts so you're dealing with 380 watts per channel on a system like this but the amplification is literally right behind the drivers yeah. so yeah. In, 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 in total we're talking about four you know two plus two four amplifiers two amplifiers built into each loudspeaker right and let's talk about the efficiency of this like the bottom end amplifier is not asked to play you know upper mid-range or tweeter form the only thing that that amplifier is being commanded to do is exactly what that driver wants it to do in its own frequency. The same with the, the top end amplifier, a hundred Watts just pushing high frequencies is multiple times above that. If you were dealing with yeah, a regular amplifier, it's all about headroom. Right. Headroom, tons and tons of headroom. Yeah. So, you know, I love the way that you guys are doing this. So basically the big difference is the, the active speaker is going to be crossed over, not with analog parts, but it's going to be crossed over from the signal, right? Absolutely. So these yeah. Analog parts, these, these chokes and capacitors and, and resistors and things, they're not, they're not sucking up the power of the amplifier. Uh, before it gets to the driver, which makes the whole thing so much more efficient. And you yeah, can do we, a lot more with it. Yeah. Let's and, talk and about another let's talk about another industry that does it this way, which would be the pro industry. Exactly. You never see uh pro guys trying to run a base signal through anything other than the base cabinets. They mold that, they time it, they um, they equalize it to that very that very area that the the the, the, the uh, transducer is going to be in. The same with the the mid range and high frequencies, which is basically what you guys are doing now. Which is one of the reasons that I love a speaker like this because it's so controllable from your level. We've actually gone um, a little bit off the deep end as well with this crossover. Um, so yes digital crossover fantastic you know it's lots of customization in there for what we can do we can really tailor to a much higher degree um but if we kind of step back a little bit and remember that uniq is a point source so all frequencies coming from a single point when you go for a crossover whether that is digital or analog you're always going to get a degree of phase shift so we've actually gone and measured though. So known signal going through our crossover, through our DSP, measuring what comes out in terms of timing. 
and then baking that difference back into the crossover. So not only do we have all the frequencies coming from a single point, they're, get, they're getting to that single point absolutely in time. So mm -hmm. it just so the imaging just snaps into place, sound staging just opens up, you get, a, you get less smearing. But we do have the off option for people. Improves. Uh, but we've even got the option in the app to turn that off. So if yeah. you prefer that more passive kind of slightly well, smear, kind, of kind of diffuse, quite yeah. often, for example, again, I've got to mention, say, it's just a generalization, but an example would be um, people who go to a lot of, say, big live classical performances where it's all diffuse and 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 um there are some who think that this absolute snap is um it's a bit off-putting but w w we even give the option to say hey you don't like it switch it off that's fantastic i love that um we're gonna we're gonna go back to uh these guys a little bit because what i would really like you guys to talk about now is we talked about they're super easy to hook up. We've talked about, you know, all of the different streaming services that, that it, that uh, you guys get on that. And we're super happy that we were able to supply the API for Cobuzz. I'm, I'm really happy to be on this uh, and this product because it's the first one, but you guys have That's also, really done well. some, um, you guys have done some really uh, innovative things as far as hookup goes uh, as well, which I guess, you know, being able to switch the left and right speaker just for this, as you were talking about before, which I never even considered. I'd never even thought about. It. I figured, okay, well, the one with the power is going to be the left, and you just put it there. But that is so cool, the way that you guys can switch that off. Um, but you've got uh, uh, all really kinds important of... for this first thing. What's that? It's really important for this first input. Yeah. Yeah, kind of. You've got an HDMI input. That's really cool. Um, so you can do the. But, well, you guys can can talk about it. it when yeah, I was working with HDMI, it was nearly through impossible. The input, through the inputs, uh, Ben. Yeah, sure. So I mean, HDMI. So we've got EAC and CEC on there. Um, so in the app, you can tell the speaker that you use use it for TV. So when you turn on the TV, it will turn on the speaker, set it to the TV import input um, selection, and then you can use the TV remote to continue changing your volume. Um, that's so that's a great quality of life um, aspect there. Uh, then moving on to we've so the original S50 wireless we had optical toss link. Yes. Um, so again, great for TVs. Um, you know, if you're running a CD transport, um, you know, if you've got a like a whole home wireless audio, like a Sonos or a Heos or something like that, um, you can use this or the digital coax on the LS50 wireless too to feed that into your existing whole home streaming system and bypassing the DACs on on their streamers. Um, and then we've got the auxiliary 3.5 mil let stereo. Me, uh, let me ask you a question about the the DAC, if you don't mind, to begin with, uh, yeah, Ben. Sure. Uh, do you guys publicize this, or can you tell us what kind of DAC that you're using? A good uh, one. A good one. <laughs> um, no, I don't have that spec. That's okay. We, that's okay. Look, is, here's the thing one. about DACs or our implement. I think I find that DACs are about 90% implementation these days anyway. And I'm quite sure. In Absolutely. fact, I took the slide out. I wish it's I would have left it. It's all about how you apply. Right. Absolutely. And, and just just a bit of a bit of a mention on the implementation. We are using a single DAC per amplifier. Correct. So cool. Four DACs. Cross talk about it. Um, yeah, we're just maximize. We're maximizing the performance of those DAC chips by giving them as little as possible to work with. Um, so and and then you know we can throw in the the DSP that we have as well, um, which every input benefits from. So you can actually tell the speakers a little bit about the room and tune it a little bit in the top end, in the mid, in the low, how big your room is, 
whether you're going to use a subwoofer, which I think will go on to a little bit later. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, but the idea of these inputs is to be able to connect anything that you may have and every input, including the analog. Um, I mean, the analog actually goes through A to D. And then we can apply all of that digital goodness that we're putting into the other inputs into your analog sources. <laughs> so yeah, if you're running a turntable, you know, running a CD player, MP3, uh, putting your iPod out the headphone jack. Yeah, it, it's Again, it all feeds back to how do you want to listen to music? How do you want to experience it? And we're going to take that to the next level. Um, the subwoofer outputs, and that's plural, uh, because we now have a subwoofer output on both the primary and the secondary. Um, they are currently playing mono signals, so we'll sum down the left and the right um, low frequencies into the sub outputs. So you can use neither, you can use one, you can use the other, you can use both at the same time. Um, and inside the Ben, app, when you actually... do plug in the subwoofer, do you have to tell the speaker or does it automatically know that there's a subwoofer automatically. connected? Automatically and does it also cross over the, uh, the top speakers based on yeah, what? We, we, have, um, we actually have a separate high pass filter setting for the main speaker and a separate low pass filter for the subwoofer output. So you can actually stop the low frequencies from going to the main speaker while sending whatever low frequencies to the subwoofer so you can get that beautiful alignment between the two, um, just integrating it perfectly. Um, and and the, the benefit of there as well is, is it's not just the integration, but also because you're alleviating the extreme low end from you know the six and a half inch, uh, five and a, five and a quarter inch, sorry, um, drive unit of the LS50. Yeah, because it's got less work to do. The mid range is just going to open up. It, the mid range is going to become even more dynamic. Um, so adding a subwoofer isn't necessarily just about adding loud and low. It's actually going to benefit the system totally. So it's Everywhere. almost like yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, that that's really cool. Uh, that your system will also, if you're the, of this elk, which I am, that this would be because I've I've got my rooms are huge. All of my rooms are really big. I would be the guy that would add a uh, that that would add a subwoofer to this. But the cool thing that I like because I'm also kind of a semi cranker that, that I'll be able to play my system louder uh with a system like that e, um because you know your amplifier is not taxed with bass and where's that uh nor is that driver so really really cool and i pulled up the um i pulled this one up only because i wanted uh people to see the the different colors that the um that the uh, ls52 wireless are are uh, are coming in do you guys know how much I'm, I should have asked this before? Do you know how much they're selling for in the U, in the U.S. right now? Uh, two and a half. Two and a half. Hey, Neetha, do me a favor and uh, uh, just um, uh, Google that at like Crutchfield or something and see what the, these guys are selling for. But about two and a half k, really, really good uh, deal. But just know that this is what you're paying for. You're paying for a active powered loudspeaker now as opposed to just a powered loudspeaker which there's just so much more going on in a speaker like this and i would even go as far to say as this is very uh, a very much of an audiophile speaker yeah i think one of one of my favorite view lines was this could be your first or this could be your last system um which i loved you know it's and you touched on it earlier um where you know you've got people coming in on bluetooth and learning about hi-fi um and great sound and and what hey, different sort of and, we uh, and uh, yeah, two and a half two point nine nine so you, you get a dollar change um and uh not that that will buy you much anymore but um <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that's no, so it's but yeah we we um we also recognize that Speakers are, you know, they become part of your home. They become part of your decor. They become, 
uh, and we do put a lot of thought into the design and the finishes because um, we we don't want anybody to kind of you know you, you buy your new speakers you go to your friends and the first thing that you don't want to say is don't worry they sound better than they look because um, <laughs> you know, then you, you absolutely how often have we heard that yeah <laughs> and you, you're automatically on the back foot um you know we wanted people to be proud of of owning kef right? and you know the, the, these finishes they're just beautiful looking in the flesh they are phenomenal um you know, and in fact we actually do the finishing in-house um you know even the gloss finish on the uh, the crimson red all done in-house at the factory um yeah, it's just amazing going through that place and watching our stuff being made um that's, that's the big surprise by the way just as a by the by i mean we've done red speakers before and always been hey it's an eye popper right it's going to go in front of a shop window and it's an eye popper but now we're not going to sell many oh my goodness um i believe it's gorgeous I love, I personally that's can't my favorite. believe how many people have bought them and i think we're oversold <laughs> um by quite a bit on these so there's a bit of a waiting list i i believe uh, but it's, it's, it's also amazing how many people are asking for the meta in the in the crimson red um not gonna we, <laughs> yeah um you know it's been really really popular so yeah it's it's not gonna happen certainly in the foreseeable future because the meta by the way ls50 meta and ls50 wireless 2 LS50 Meta is the new version of the passive, and Meta refers to a technology. And it's, a, it's an extraordinary new technology <clears throat> behind the UniQ. There's an explosion of the UniQ. And both the LS50 Meta, the passive loudspeaker, and the LS50 Wireless 2 have this Meta material absorption technology. That's what it stands for. Perhaps I can hand over to Ben and get myself <laughs> a cup of tea. <laughs> right. So, um, so I mean, as as I say, UniQ. Um, just to kind of roll back a little bit. So we've placed the uh, the tweeter at the exact acoustic center of the mid range, and what that allows us to do is, is have that huge widespread of sound. Um, because we use the mid-range driver as a waveguide for the high frequencies we use. You've got the uh, the tangerine waveguide at the front, which helps to push that towards the cone. Uh, almost acts like a compression driver, actually, the, um, the tangerine waveguide. But, um, and because we've got all those frequencies coming from a single place, we don't get the, uh, the cancellation in the crossover region that you would have with separated drive units. But um, the, the meta material, so this is the um, actually the first use that we're aware of, of meta materials in loudspeakers. So the bit on the end, where you've got the three kind of black discs on the, on the right-hand side. Um, so what these aim to do, or aim to do, they actually succeed in doing, um, when the tweeter moves backwards and forwards, you're sending sound forwards, which is the sound that we want, because that's what's going to hit our ears. But then we have sound going backwards. And you know, the whole point of having the speaker cabinet is to enclose all of this back wave, because like with the low frequencies, it will wrap around and cancel out. But the high frequencies will bounce around inside the box, and then some of it will hit the tweeter and cause distortions. Um, so this meta material is a very, very clever way of taking those long tubes that you may have seen on, on some speakers, so, um, of trying to get all of that absorption into a much, much smaller space so that you're not compromising other parts of the design. Um, and in multiple channels. So we're actually, it's actually essentially 30 Helmholtz resonators. Um, and we're absorbing 99% of that back wave 
from the tweeter from 620 hertz upwards. And when I first, the first time I listened to this, um, it's actually in the room that I can see the door of um, right now uh, in our kind of cinema room in the, uh, in the office. So I had the, um, the, uh, the, the previous LS50 and the LS50 Meta. And the track I used, uh, it was a track that Johan introduced actually called um, Gas Station Rose by Sean Rowe. And on the, on the original S50, you know, his voice, he's got this beautiful baritone voice. Um, it was sounding nice and thick. It was, uh, this, is, this is good, this is great. Um, the meta showed me why it sounded so thick. So what was actually happening was, yeah, it was all quite obvious listening to the meta that he was recording this, uh, certainly the vocals, in a, um, in a very reverberant room. So you've got a lot of reverb, a lot of echo. And on the, and on the original S50, and, other, and will be the case with every tweeter design not using meta, um, a lot of that reverb was starting to smear into, into the foundation of his vocal performance. And the meta, because we're absorbing all that back wave, that tweeter is just able to resolve all of that reverb in time in its own. And it just, it was much more of a window into the, into the performance um, than I had heard before on the LS50. Mm. And the LS50 is still an amazing speaker. Well, we have to be, we have to be uh, intentionally very careful because with the LS50, the original LS50 uh, mini monitor, the ho it was a home run for us. Um, the, 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 the fundamental, apart from the looks, the fundamental characteristic, we didn't want to spoil it, but we wanted to improve on it. And everybody's got a different way of listening. My wow moment when I first listened to the LS50 meta, and in fact, the LS50 Wireless 2, which has this meta technology, what's that? Um, I'm a big guy for um, sound staging and imaging. And we all listen for different things. And to me, it was just like, oh my goodness, um, this almost sounds like a, you know, a panel loudspeaker. There's no box. It's just extraordinary. And that's 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 what pleases me. We all, you know, you know. that's the way the uh, that's the way the blade hits me every single time I listen to it because yeah. I'm a big panel guy too. One thing I do not like listening to are two boxes. If those two boxes don't have the ability to disappear, and we don't really have time for the physics behind this, but if the if the two if you're listening to music and and it sounds like it's coming out of two boxes, something is wrong. Um, it could even be your setup, but if if the speakers are set up properly and you're still, it still sounds like two boxes, then something's just wrong. It's Ooh. just wrong. It should sound like a whole sound stage, and that's one thing that Kef has been known for ever. I used to sell the old uh, 104.2s and the 107s uh, with the with the what was that little bot the cube? Yeah, with the cube. Now we Which had great a very sophisticated equalizer it was equalizers were bang out of fashion that's why everybody talked about the cube oh it adds so much more bass or it makes bass better or something and i'm going yeah it does but listen to what it does for the mid-range it was unbelievable what it did with the mid-range when you stopped oh, yeah. taxing the that that upper mid bass the way it was but it really cool it stuff like, but it's always I've, been i've still got a cube in one of my cupboards there i'll bet you could sell that for a lot of money people want those things it's not gonna go it would yeah. <laughs> but that's when I, that was my first uh initiation and in, into calf we picked up those and we were going oh my god we just love them and you know these guys have come so far since then and I, I just love the way that even though 
the 104 and the 107 in that series were the top of their game. Um, you guys didn't stop and you continued to go further and further past that. Who takes a perfectly fine product and says, yeah, we're not, we're just not going to do it that way anymore. That's what we were going. Oh no, no, it's perfect. And then the UniQ came out. UniQ came out. We were going, man, these guys are just, you know, on top of it. It, you know, nobody likes change, right? Wet babies. That's it. Everybody else, nobody likes change. It, it, but you guys just did a great job of that. And I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you both, you know, taking the time to, to be on the show. I knew we were not going to be able to get ready, uh, get finished with this in an hour. I fun. knew it. It's like and an it, hour, hour and a half. Again, it's almost time to start work. Well, it's almost time for you to have a pint. I think I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what you guys are doing. And, you know, and I don't know, I don't know what you, you, you do over there in, in Hong Kong, Ben, but it's, it's probably time for that too. Uh, what did well, I, I leave out? What did we, uh, what did, what did we leave out that we should, we, that we should at least bring up anything? Ooh. The 52 now is out. I think it came out in September, correct? Yeah. 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 September, yeah. September, September. September, October, November. So we've got uh, the, the, uh, the 50 is out and available now. Uh, anything, anything that you guys are planning on doing that, that we should know about that you can talk about? Uh, that's the thing. I, I, I get told about stuff at the last minute because I blab. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, which uh, probably isn't isn't a good trait for a product training specialist. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no, I mean, it's I I look at so I I hear about some of the stuff that's let's, happening. Let's get Christmas over and done with. Yeah, yeah, I'm not I'm not I'm not looking for anything. Uh, I'm not looking for anything. Um, uh, uh, you know, too too terribly sensitive. Did we leave out anything. Ne that you next year is going to be a good year. Tons of ideas coming Thank to fruition. Well, would you guys would you guys be so kind as to come back and join us uh, maybe uh, in a few months and we can we can talk about some of the the new stuff that's that's happening? Be yeah, delighted. absolutely, absolutely delighted. Well, gosh, guys, thank you so much for for joining us. And uh, folks, if you haven't heard the Kev, go find uh, go find some place you can listen to them. They're they're fantastic speakers. These guys are dedicated. They're music lovers. As you could, as you could hear, so many of the things that they're doing is just for your convenience, just so that it makes it easier to, to hook up or more fun to listen to or more versatile to listen to. But we are super, super happy to have Kev as a partner of CoBuzz. And when I say partner, I really mean it. Yeah, uh, Johan, you... Uh, the first time we met and, and I'm with Cobuzz, the only he would not let me speak about the speakers. I wanted to come in and talk about the speakers. And he just kept telling me more and more cool stuff about Cobuzz. Johan, I cannot tell you how much I, I appreciate it and how much you're supporting. Oh, it, you know, it's it's a bit egoistic, uh, as explained at the beginning here, but uh for me, I mean, uh the fundamental, even from the start, has been my my passion and love of music and that's what it's all about and my voracious appetite for collecting music and discovering music uh, i have to take hats off my own personal hat off to cobas for the way it's presented actually makes me discover stuff just personally more than other um other streaming and i've got them all i have to have them all because i also help with development and uh sure. beta and i've all got them all too i mean i and you know yeah. what i've got them all and i, I actually i actually use them uh, I'll, I'll start with code buzz if it doesn't if yeah. we don't have it i'll go all the way down to spotify i don't care sometimes i just want to hear the music right <laughs> absolutely yeah so thank you guys so much for uh for joining us, we'll uh, we'll have you back uh, next year when some more when some more cool stuff is happening. And uh, let's see, next week I'm trying to think of who we've got on our schedule next week. I believe it's um, uh, let me just find out. It's Arlick. Yeah. So we're oh, having well, yeah. Hey, Richard Bates. 
Uh, Richard's going to be with us, and so is uh, uh, Alex Brinkman. They're both incredible guys, and they're another company that's super, super innovative. I, I love their product. Uh, Dan actually has uh, the G2. Uh, I want to get the G2 too um, at, at some point. So we've got some really, really good uh, live streams coming up. I hope you guys decide to come back and join us. And um, and I guess we're going to go ahead and end it here. Uh, Johan, uh, Ben, thank you so much. And Thanks for we will be, uh, we'll be talking to you guys very soon. Cheers. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everyone.